dinosaur fossils. Believe it or not, some of the strangest things ever found in Antarctica have been dinosaur fossils. In 2016 alone, researchers announced that they discovered a diverse cache of many fossils in Antarctica. This doesn't mean just a few different bones, researchers found at least a metric ton worth of fossils after an international research team went digging. According to a professional biologist from the University of Queensland, most of the fossils found were between 71 million and 67 million years old. So what kind of creatures did they find? Most of the fossils were from clams, cephalopods, and shells, but they also found the bones of some prehistoric marine reptiles. Perhaps the coolest dinosaur fossil ever found in Antarctica was way before this, though. The most celebrated dinosaur on the southernmost continent of our planet was discovered in 1991, and it's a beast that looks a whole lot like a T-Rex. It's properly known as a Cryolophosaurus, and it was likely the largest land predator of its time in the early Jurassic period. This was a time when Antarctica was approximately 600 miles north of its current position, and rather than ice, the continent was covered in temperate forests, meaning it was home to winged reptiles and other amazing creatures. The Cryolophosaurus was a meat-eating dinosaur that probably could have taken on any of the famous dinos you know about today. Unfortunately, this amazing creature went extinct 190 million years ago. In terms of its height, it probably stood at about 20 feet tall. Ancient Meteorite an ancient meteorite that was found in Antarctica over 20 years ago is still the topic of a lot of controversy. It all started when NASA scientists announced that they had found possible signs of Martian life inside a meteorite from Antarctica. This is straight from NASA themselves. The meteorite has since been labeled as the famous Allen Hills meteorite, also known as ALH84001. It landed on Earth likely due to a cosmic impact on Mars, which was powerful enough to blast rocks off the planet's surface, and one of them just so happened to reach our own planet. This happened somewhere around 13,000 years ago, with the meteorite being discovered by geologists on snowmobiles back in 1984, but the rock itself originated 4 billion years ago on Mars. The reason the meteorite is so controversial is because NASA scientists believed at the time that it held evidence of microbial fossils that could only have been produced by biological processes. In the published study from 1996, researchers claimed the presence of such fossils indicated a high likelihood of life beyond Earth, specifically on the Red Planet. Since that first study, a lot of debate has gone on with supporters on both sides. Some say it does not mean a thing about life in the universe, and others are still 100% convinced that it does. The truth is that nobody knows for sure, even all these years later. Buried Viruses One of the strangest discoveries to happen on the continent of Antarctica has been of a viral nature. I'm talking about viruses buried beneath the ice. As the planet begins to warm, the ice begins to thaw. As that happens, some stuff that has been buried in the ice for thousands of years is being revealed. Scientists say that the most dangerous thing to come from Antarctica thawing will be prehistoric viruses. Scientists claim that these viruses have been dormant inside glaciers and permafrost for at least 10,000 years or 15,000 years. Just earlier in 2020, scientists analyzed ice core samples from an ice cap in Tibet, and they identified several viruses that had been locked in the settlement for over 15,000 years, some of which were totally unknown. And that's only in Tibet. The issue with Antarctica is that the whole place is covered in ice. Not just a bit of it, the entire thing. Antarctica was not always this way either. It was once a beautiful forest with many different life forms, including dinosaurs. And because thousands of years ago, microbes that aren't around today inhabited the soil of the Antarctic jungle, the entire continent is basically a giant petri dish frozen in time. It is highly likely that as the ice melts, pathogens that we don't know about will be released into the atmosphere. According to a professor of genomics and bioinformatics at the I. Marseille University in France, some ancient viruses such as smallpox could make a reappearance in the world as the ice melts. But worse than that, this same scientist claimed that older viruses that had caused animal extinctions in the past could come back to bite us in the bud. Antarctic UFO this next story is not in any way confirmed. However, the photographs that have appeared online of a UFO frozen under the ice of Antarctica are definitely thought-provoking. It's actually a little scary. A Russian man published the photo on social media after finding it on Google Earth. In the photo, you can see a crack in the ice and what appears to be a UFO deep down inside of it. This guy claims it got stuck in the ice after an accident that happened in 2016. The guy also claimed that the UFO in the picture measures at least 200 feet 60 meters. And yeah, the picture definitely looks like a disc-shaped flying machine. However, there have been no legitimate reports of this. 
The truth is that nobody really knows what the image shows, or if it's even real. It could just be a tear in the ice, it could be an unidentified flying object, or it could be something left over from a lost civilization. It could even just be photoshopped. The truth is that we don't know, but it's definitely cool to think that there is a whole mothership buried under the ice in Antarctica. Hidden Antarctic Pyramids Deep in the frozen world of Antarctica, there is a mountain that looks suspiciously like a pyramid. This mountain has become famous recently on social media, with many people pointing out that it could be evidence of a previous civilization that lived on the continent before it was frozen in ice. Of course, there are other people who are claiming that it's an alien pyramid purposely covered in snow. According to experts, all those theories are wrong. A professor of Earth System Science from the University of California told Live Science in an email that the mountain only looks like a pyramid. The steep sides are actually the work of hundreds of millions of years of weather erosion, and it's not actually uncommon for a peak to look like the tip of a pyramid. This mountain doesn't have a formal name, but it's one of the many mountains inside the Ellsworth Mountain Range in Antarctica. They were first spotted by an American aviator on a flight in 1935, but it was not until all the crazy people got in the internet that the mountain turned into a pyramid. The mountains are located in a hot zone for fossils, very close to the area where a trilobite was found dated to be at least 500 million years old. Oldest Worm Ever You probably wouldn't expect to find sperm in Antarctica. Typically, things that don't have bones don't fossilize very well. This includes sperm and worms. That's what makes it so strange that scientists discovered fossilized worm sperm in Antarctica that is at least 50 million years old. This was published in a scientific journal, in which researchers from the Swedish Museum of Natural History claim that they made the find while examining a fossilized cocoon made by one of these weird worm creatures. For whatever reason, the cocoons are extremely resistant to decay. While investigating one of the cocoons, also known as an egg case, the scientists found a spermatozoa cell. After further research, they determined that what they had found was 10 million years older than any other fossilized sperm on Earth. Nonetheless, researchers still don't know what the creature looked like, but they believe that the sperm found is very similar to that of crayfish worms, which are weird animals that live on freshwater lobsters and look kind of like leeches. And to disappoint even further, even though they found the cell, there were no DNA remains to investigate. This means that there will be no biological reincarnation of this weird worm in the lab anytime soon. The B-15 Iceberg the first thing that comes to mind when you think about an iceberg is probably the Titanic sinking. And while the iceberg that hit the Titanic was pretty sizable, the biggest iceberg on record was actually recorded in 2000. It's known as Iceberg B-15 and it was roughly the size of Connecticut when it was found. That's right, this single iceberg was literally as big as the state of Connecticut. It broke away from Antarctica in late 2000 and is still the biggest iceberg recorded that has ever broken off of the Ross Ice Shelf. However, 18 years after the iceberg broke away from the continent, a new discovery shows that it's melting at an alarming rate. It has fractured into a bunch of smaller icebergs, and most of them have melted. There are only four pieces of this enormous iceberg left, with the biggest piece being called B-15Z. The International Space Station captured photos of this remaining shard in 2018, and experts believe it's nearing the end of its journey. This isn't really that shocking, but it's still a pretty cool story. Crash Landing there is only one possible explanation for the photo that has appeared online of what looks to be some sort of crash landing in Antarctica. It's obviously an alien spaceship. In the photograph, it looks like some kind of spear-shaped craft hit the ice, skidded for quite some time, and then was buried under the snow. And yes, the only reasonable explanation is that it came from space. However, that might not be such a reasonable explanation after all. According to a senior lecturer in physical geography at Keele University, the photo actually shows an avalanche that caused a huge block of ice to go skating down the mountainside and then roll for much farther than any other pieces of debris. According to the professional, what is obviously an alien ship is actually just a huge piece of ice covered in snow. And what is obviously a trail of destruction made when the ship collapsed is really just the trail of that block of ice skidding across the snow. Of course, the biggest reason why this looks so much like an alien crash is because the photos you have probably seen only show the piece of ice covered in snow from above. If you look at the larger photo, you can very clearly see there is a huge mountain near the object, and there are lots of smaller pieces of debris that just didn't make it that far. Sorry everyone, but you have been duped. The Loneliest ATM on Earth 
Everyone knows that money rules the world. One of the strangest things you would discover on a trip to Antarctica has nothing to do with aliens, wildlife, or geological formations. The strangest thing is definitely the loneliest ATM machine in the world. Even though Antarctica is home to elephant seals, perpetual darkness, and basically no humans, Wells Fargo installed an automatic teller machine in 1998 anyways. You can find the ATM machine at McMurdo Station, the biggest scientific installation on the continent. But why? McMurdo Station only has a population of between 250 and 1,000, and the community is very small. But according to Mental Floss, commerce there is critical. That's because there are indeed coffee shops, bars, a post office, and general stores on the continent. Even though it's a closed economy, people still need cash. After all, credit card machines don't really work that well at the bottom of the earth. You're probably wondering who services this ATM machine. Well, according to a spokesperson from Wells Fargo, the company actually trains the staff at McMurdo Station to do simple repairs. There is also a secondary ATM machine that is able to be used for parts. Then every two years a vendor is chosen to make the journey to Antarctica just to service the machine and bring it up to speed with the latest technology. But this is no easy job. The people chosen actually have to undergo a psychological exam and a physical exam to ensure that they are able to deal with the brutal Arctic climate and the possible psychological damage that occurs from taking such a journey. The Ice Fish Last on the list for today is one of the strangest fish ever to be found in Antarctica. New research has shed some light on the fish known as the Antarctic Blackfin Ice Fish. This weird sea creature has a transparent skull and see-through blood. It's an absolute anomaly in the world of marine life. The fact that such a strange creature can live in such a hostile environment, meaning the icy waters around Antarctica, has baffled scientists for quite a few years. But in a new study published in Nature Ecology and Evolution, a team of scientists explained how they mapped the genome of this fish and compared it to its close relatives. What they found is incredibly interesting. Apparently, tens of millions of years of evolution has resulted in the ice fish gaining some unusual features. The first weird feature is that the ice fish has clear blood. That's because it doesn't make red blood cells and it doesn't have any hemoglobin to carry oxygen throughout its body. While those traits are critical for most animals to survive, the ice fish just does not need it. It has evolved special antifreeze for its blood since red blood would get too gunky and hard to pump and cold water. The fish also developed extremely large gills and shed its scales, and this allowed it to absorb oxygen directly through its skin rather than needing the type of blood system that we have. It's also expanded its circulatory system and grew a heart four times larger than any closely related fish species with red blood. This fish is a prime example of Darwin's theory of evolution. Take two fish, leave one of them in icy waters and the other in tropical waters, and watch as they evolve. One of them has clear blood, the other has red blood. The Antarctic ice fish is truly fascinating. Number 10. The Iron Hand How cool would it be to have an iron hand? You could punch through brick, you could crush your enemies, and you could stick your hand directly into a fire. You'd be pretty well invincible. But then again, you wouldn't really play video games or text anyone since you wouldn't have a thumb. But that didn't matter in the 16th century where our first archeological discovery took place. One of the first prosthetic limbs in history was used by a fierce German mercenary knight named Gotz, and sometimes referred to as Gotz the Iron Hand. He lived in the early 1500s and was a soldier for hire. He also got hit by a cannonball in 1504 and lost his arm. To keep fighting, the clever mercenary developed the first iron hand ever. It's unclear who built this artifact, but it was definitely used by Gotz. It didn't give much of a range of motion, but he could still hold a sword with it, and he could still punch people with it. But then a few years later, the mercenary upgraded to an even better iron hand. According to the American Journal of Surgery, the second hand was able to be manipulated using his left hand. He could tighten the joints at the knuckles to allow for a tighter grip. This helped for holding a sword, holding the reins of his warhorse, and even using a quill to write with. The mercenary's prosthetic limb is kept today inside a small castle in a German town of about 1,600 people. Gotts the Iron Hand is their historical pride and joy, with the prosthetic limb even being featured on their coat of arms. Number 9. The La Brea Woman the La Brea Woman was the name given to the girl whose remains were discovered at the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles. The remains were first discovered in 1914, and they turned out to be the partial skeletal remains of a woman who had died at around 25 years old, about 10,022 years ago. To date, she is still the only person who has ever been discovered inside the La Brea Tar Pits. 
You might be wondering how just one person in all of history could be found at a site like the La Brea Tar Pits. Well, archaeological evaluations of the woman's skeleton showed that her skull had been fractured, probably by a blow to the head, and that was likely the cause of her death. It was probably that her body was dumped into the tar pit like you might dump a corpse into a sinkhole to try and hide your crime. But considering the woman lived in North America 10,000 years ago, nobody really knows what happened that caused her body to be lost in the sticky tar of the pits. Number 8. Mysterious Dinosaur Bones a mysterious new archaeological discovery of two dinosaur skeletons has revealed a totally new species of Nothosaur, a group of aquatic reptiles that lived in the water during the Triassic period over 200 million years ago. Because of their small heads, white snouts, and flipper-like limbs, the bones were easily identified by paleontologists as belonging to a Nothosaur. However, the bones were found with much shorter tails than any other specimen of Nothosaur. And while this may sound super boring so far, it's actually quite interesting. According to a doctor from the Chinese Academy of Sciences, the new species adapted differently than the other Nothosaurs, which means we're looking at a bridge in evolution. The newer Nothosaur with their smaller tails could hang out at the bottom of the sea without exerting much energy, which could have made them more reliable predators. It means that even 200 million years ago, dinosaurs were still evolving. It makes you wonder what would have happened if it hadn't been for that blasted meteorite. What would another 200 million years of evolution have turned these creatures into? Number 7. Edward Scissorhands Archaeologists have made an extremely bizarre discovery. Not only did they find a makeshift prosthetic device on a warrior buried 1,000 years ago, but the prosthetic device wasn't even what you would expect. Rather than having an iron hand like the German mercenary, this guy replaced his arm with a sword. According to the report from Archaeology magazine, Wear found on the skeleton's teeth suggested that he had been adjusting the prosthetic straps using his mouth for quite some time. They also discovered calluses and bone spurs on the stump of his arm that showed exactly where he had replaced his limb with a sword. It had basically become a part of his body. Where was such a brave warrior discovered, you ask? He was found inside of a necropolis in northern Italy, among several other skeletons, a headless horse, and even some dogs. But he wasn't Italian or from the Roman Empire. The man was part of the Lombards, who were a Germanic people that ruled nearly all of the Italian peninsula between 568 and 774, after the fall of the Byzantine Empire. The Lombards were a ruthless warrior people, so it makes sense that when one of them lost a limb, he'd simply screw a sword onto the stump and continue stabbing his enemies. Scientists believe that the warrior died probably around the age of 50, but his arm being amputated likely happened much earlier in his life. Number 6. Viking Poop Get ready to be grossed out. Our next story today is about Viking poop. That's right, archaeologists have discovered perhaps the best preserved piece of poop ever. It was found in New York way back in 1972, under what eventually turned into a bank. This is why the preserved Viking excrement was called the Lloyds Bank Coprolite, or if you prefer, the Lloyds Bank Turd. But why is such a discovery important? It seems like something that nobody would really care about, but that's not true at all. Some paleontologists have referred to the fossilized Viking coprolite as being as precious as the crown jewels. This is because the poop dates back to the 9th century, when the area of York in England was ruled by ferocious Norse kings. It's a very important time in English history. Even more interesting is what scientists were able to determine simply by doing DNA testing on the poop. They were able to extract tons of information from the fossil, including that the human who had deposited it had a diet of meat and bread but they also had intestinal issues. The Lloyds Bank Coprolite was apparently filled with whipworm and mawworm eggs. This probably meant that the Viking warrior had stomach aches and other nasty gastrointestinal problems. If you're feeling particularly curious, you can check out the most famous poop in the world at the Jorvik Viking Center, where it sits safely inside of a glass box. Number five, the Khufu ship. The Khufu ship is one of the most impressive Egyptian vessels ever found. It was originally discovered in 1954 inside the Great Pyramid of Giza. The vessel was also found with the famous Egyptian pharaoh himself, whom the Great Pyramid was built for. The wooden ship was constructed 4,600 years ago, and so well designed that it could actually still set sail if launched back onto the Nile River even today. The exact purpose of the boat is still a bit of a mystery, but one of the prevailing theories is that it was placed inside of Khufu's burial chamber so that he could sail across the heavens after death to be with the sun god Ra. 
The ship was found under a stone wall on the southern side of the Great Pyramid, and it took over a decade for experts to put together all 1,224 individual pieces of the giant boat. It's now sitting inside a specially designed museum just outside the pyramid. As for Khufu, he was the second pharaoh of the fourth dynasty. He ruled Egypt over 2,500 years before Jesus was born. But other than commissioning the Great Pyramid of Giza to be built, there's little else known about him. Number four, prehistoric bongs. This next one is for the stoners out there. Anyone who thinks bongs are a modern device is absolutely wrong. Archaeologists actually discovered bongs crafted of solid gold that were used by the ancient Scythians almost 2,500 years ago for cannabis. The discovery was made by archaeologists in southern Russia, and they found over seven pounds of gold artifacts from the time of the Scythians, who were a nomadic people that ruled much of Central Asia back in the time that Khufu was ruling Egypt. The gold artifacts included jewelry, cups, and of course, the bongs. But not only were they used for smoking ancient marijuana, they were also used for opium. It turns out that even the most ancient of civilizations had a bit of a problem with drugs. Greek historians claim that the Scythians used the gold vessels to brew an opium concoction, which they may have drank before smoking the cannabis. It's unclear whether these substances were used for ritual purposes or just for recreation. However, scientists are positive that they used both substances at the same time. These must have been some serious people if they needed to smoke cannabis after opium just to get their rocks off. Number three, lost city of Tanea. Yet another lost city has been found by archeologists in Greece. It seems that there's no end to ancient cities spread across the Mediterranean. This is the lost city of Tanea, and it was likely founded 3,000 years ago by Trojan prisoners after their devastating defeat in the Trojan War. You know, the one where they were defeated by Brad Pitt and an enormous wooden horse? It's likely that the survivors of the Trojan War fled to the south of Greece, where they constructed a small village. The search for this lost city began in 1984, when an archaeologist discovered a sarcophagus near the small village of Chiliomodi, just slightly south of Athens. After the first sarcophagus was found, a huge archaeological undertaking went down, but not until 2013. And it wasn't until 2018 that a graveyard was found that contained the remains of Trojan men and women. These tombs were stocked with bronze and gold jewelry, gold coins, and other valuable grave relics. This indicates that the people who had lived in the ancient city of Tanea must have been pretty wealthy. But it wasn't until after the graveyard was found that the first buildings of the ancient city were discovered. The researchers finally found beams, columns, and stone floors buried under the dirt that suggests the city had once stood, but throughout the centuries had been destroyed and built over. The people who lived in Tanea were likely the last of the Trojan warriors. Their city probably thrived from between 323 and 146 BC, when the Roman Empire occupied Greece and brought the entire region under imperial control. Number 2. Spanish Stonehenge As time goes on, we seem to find more and more Stonehenge copycats throughout the world. In 2019 alone, a severe drought caused water levels to drop, which revealed an ancient stone circle of over 100 standing rocks. But what's really incredible about this new Spanish Stonehenge is that it's dated to be at least 7,000 years old. According to NBC News, it's known as the Dolmen of Guadalajara, and it vanished in 1963 when the Spanish government constructed a reservoir to feed a hydroelectric dam. The photos of the revealed structure were snapped by NASA's Landsat 8 satellite in the middle of July, and it sparked renewed interest in the mysterious monument. Even though the stone circle was originally excavated in the 1920s by a German archaeologist, his findings were never published until the 1960s. By then, the reservoir was already planned to be flooded. For that reason, modern archaeologists have never been able to properly excavate or investigate the standing rocks, which are believed to have been part of an enclosed structure. They may also have been used as a tomb, a site for trade in ancient times, or even for religious rituals. Unfortunately, the reservoir has since filled back up with water, and it's now impossible to study the Spanish Stonehenge properly. Number 1. Unusual Dog Burial Animal burials are nothing new when it comes to ancient Egypt. It's now fairly well known that the ancient Egyptians mummified all kinds of animals, from dogs to baboons. We also now know that there were special cults in ancient Egypt that practiced mass sacrifice of dogs and cats. However, a new discovery made a few years ago of an unusual canine burial in a brick structure in Abydos has raised even more questions about the ancient Egyptian practices of animal burial. It all began when a pair of preserved dogs were found curled inside a large ceramic pot that dated back 3,000 years. It was the very first time that dogs have ever been found inside of burial jars. 
the pups were nicknamed Houdini and Chewy, as horribly inappropriate as that may be, and they even had their fur still intact. Because of the size of the dogs, researchers at the time could not understand how they were forced into the jars. What researchers could determine was that the dogs were about five years old when they died and were likely sacred animals in life. Because of the way they were buried, they must have been held in high regard within the community. However, scientists and Egyptologists don't know who the dogs were, why they were so important, or who they had belonged to, if they had even belonged to anyone. For those who don't know, Abydos, the location where the dogs were found, was constructed around 2750 BC and dedicated to the second dynasty king, Kasa Kemui. Which of these strange discoveries did you enjoy the most? The Chicken Church The Chicken Church is by far one of the strangest abandoned structures in the world. It was originally built in 1990 after Daniel Alamja dreamed that God told him to construct a church on a hill in which all the religions of the world could worship together in harmony. At first, Daniel did not take too much stock in the dream, but then on a trip into the Indonesian countryside, he witnessed the very same hill from his dream. Daniel purchased the land. He began construction on the chicken church, but eventually he ran out of money. Daniel was forced to abandon the church before it was ever completed. It was not for another 15 years until 2015 that interest was renewed in the chicken church thanks to news articles that showed up online featuring the weird structure. More and more tourists then began flocking to this place in Indonesia, and the money earned from these tourists allowed Daniel to go back to the chicken church and keep building. Unfortunately, the church has yet to be finished. Underneath the structure are at least 15 unfinished rooms, many of which have become sanctuaries for homeless people and drug addicts. The walls are littered with graffiti, the church is crumbling little by little into ruin, and even some bats have taken roost. It looks like even with tourist numbers going up, the church will probably never be finished. And as a side note, Daniel told news reports that the church is not actually based on a chicken, it's supposed to look like a dove. Michigan Central Station Nothing symbolizes the tragic fall of Detroit quite like Michigan Central Station. This abandoned yet beautiful building shows just how far Detroit has fallen from its days of automotive glory. The Michigan Central Station was occupied and functional for 75 years. It was used to ship the people of Detroit off to war, to bring them home, to send them on vacation, and so much more. But for the last 30 years, Michigan Central Station has been home to nothing but vandals. Oh yeah, and some junkies and some homeless people. The sounds of laughter and joy have been replaced by the weir of cameras going off, the slow dripping of water leaking from the roof, and the hissing of spray paint. The station is abandoned, decrepit, and will likely be destroyed sometime in the future. This is exceptionally sad considering the station's history. It began its conception in 1908 and had its framework in place by December of 1912. Michigan Central Station was formally opened on January 4th, 1914 after a fire at the old transport depot in December of 1913 caused a premature opening. In today's money, the station set back the city of Detroit about $55 million, but nobody could have seen the fall of the industry just 40 years later. By the 1950s, rail depots all over the country were being abandoned because of the decline in business. Pieces of the station began being sold off in 1956. The waiting room was closed in 1967, and then many of the Grand Walnut benches were sold off at just $25 each. All the amenities vanished, and the entire building was eventually bankrupted and shut down. Abandoned Mental Asylum in the Woods Probably one of the strangest abandoned places you could find right now is located in the absolute middle of nowhere. I'm talking about an abandoned mental asylum in the woods that almost nobody knows about. First, you need to travel to New York State. Then you'll need to go about 25 miles north of Pomona. From there, you need to find a trail leading off into a spooky wood. You will then find yourself surrounded by trees on an old worn path with nobody else on it. Continue along this path and you will find a cemetery littered with hundreds of grave markers, most of which are not named. The grave markers only have numbers on them. But if you go even further, you will come upon the abandoned Letchworth Village which was founded in 1911 as a state institution for the segregation of the epileptic and feeble-minded. In other words, it was founded as a home for the mentally insane. It's unclear exactly what happened to the mental asylum, but judging by the ridiculous number of gravestones, there were at least 900 burials from between 1917 and 1967. It's not clear what kind of horrors went on in this place or why it shut down, but I have a feeling that we may be better off not knowing. In fact, we should probably let the abandoned bones of this institute slowly be reclaimed by nature. Rossinger's Resort 
Grossinger's resort was once a luxurious getaway in the Catskills, frequented by the wealthiest members of society. This was back in the 1950s before airfare was cheap and easy. Rather than flying from New York to Miami, it was easier to take a luxurious summer vacation in the Catskills at one of the many prominent holiday resorts. Grossinger's resort was one of the best. It was situated in the hills of the small town of Liberty, and for decades, at least 150,000 visitors stayed at the resort every year. The facilities were state-of-the-art. It was the first resort ever in the United States to offer skiing throughout the year with artificial snow, and it was even the inspiration for the movie Dirty Dancing. All of this is made even more amazing by the fact that Grossinger's resort started as a small family business in 1917 created by Austrian immigrants. But all good things must come to an end. And this fascinating place of luxury eventually fell into disrepair in 1972. Global travel was kicking up, airfare was down, and people could easily fly outside of New York. By 1986, the hotel was forced to close. Since then, it has become a literal ruin. But if you look close enough, you can still see the nostalgic pleasures of the 1950s. Of course, if you look even closer, you can probably spot a ghost or two as well. Specifically, the indoor swimming pools look like a great meeting place for the mortally challenged. Temple of Santiago The Temple of Santiago is a church in the state of Chiapas, Mexico that was abandoned hundreds of years ago. However, it's been sitting underwater for the past 50 years, drowned and somewhat forgotten. This church has had an extremely rough life. As reported by the Daily Mail, the church was built in the middle of the 16th century in the year 1564 by a group of monks. Locals had, at the time, expected the population in the area around the church to flourish, but that never happened. Then a plague devastated the area, and the temple was subsequently abandoned in the year 1773. For the next few hundred years, the temple remained a ghostly site in an otherwise barren landscape never really visited by anyone. Then in 1966, the area was flooded to create a reservoir for a nearby dam. It was not until 2002 that a drought caused water levels to drop so significantly that tourists could walk all the way to the church. It has since become wildly popular with foreign and domestic tourists, and even though the water levels have risen once more, there are now fishermen who take curious visitors by boat to see the remains of this strange and oddly captivating temple. Kilchurn Castle Kilchurn Castle in Scotland is strangely mystifying. This is one of the most fascinating abandoned relics in the entire country. There is not much left of it anymore, but it was once a fabulous structure. The castle was originally built in 1450 by the first Lord of Glenarchy. It was a five-story tower house complete with a courtyard and a giant outer wall. The castle went on to be extended through the following centuries. In 1681, the castle was transformed into a barracks capable of housing at least 200 troops. And then between 1750 and 1750, 1945, the castle was used as a government garrison. But Kiltrin Castle was eventually abandoned in 1760 after it was struck by lightning and seriously damaged. The remains of the tower are still sitting upside down in the middle of the courtyard. What's even more interesting is that the castle was originally built on a small island in the middle of a lake, but then in 1817, the water level fell and connected the castle to the mainland. Today, the castle is in the care of historic Scotland and is open to visitors, but it has never been restored and is still slowly crumbling crumbling into ruin. Kloster Allerheiligen Kloster Allerheiligen is an ancient monastery in Germany that has been destroyed by fire on so many occasions that the general consensus is that God hates it. This building is located deep inside the Black Forest of Germany, and today it stands a strange and haunting ruin. According to historical reports, the first abbey was built on the site in 1192. It was a simple wooden construction, but over the next few centuries, the church grew and grew. Local donations helped the church to be upgraded, and it became quite the impressive structure. However, a fire destroyed the monastery in 1470. The church was restored, but in 1555, another fire destroyed it yet again. Repairs were made after that, and the church stayed alive. Then in 1804, the church was struck by lightning and was lit on fire for a third time. Nobody bothered repairing it this time, and the monastery was abandoned and left to rot. But even today, the ruins of the church still stand. It has been kept from bursting into flames a fourth time by historic preservationists. Monks and pilgrims do flock to the site, and it's become very popular with tourists. If you plan on visiting the Black Forest in Germany, I suggest in the autumn when the temperatures are moderate and the spooky atmosphere is at its spookiest. Aniva Rock Lighthouse 
The Aniva Rock Lighthouse was built in 1939 by the Japanese. All these years later, it still stands on a piece of rock located slightly east of mainland Russia, right between the Sea of Japan and the Sea of Okhotsk. The Russians had originally wanted the building for use as a penal colony, but instead the two nations managed to come to an agreement and split the island. As a result, a ring of lighthouses was built along the rocky coast to signal incoming ships and troop carriers. But after 50 years of sharing the island, the Russians pretty much stole it. This action caused half a million Japanese people to be evacuated back to the northern island of Hokkaido. And in 1951, the island was officially given to the Russians. But the Aniva Rock Lighthouse still remains all these years and conflicts later. It might be abandoned, but it's still there. It's also in one of the most rural and relatively unimportant places on Earth. The lighthouse is full of old equipment and diesel engines, and the only ones who visit it anymore are the seagulls. The Great Wall of China a lot of people don't know that after 2300 years of construction, the Great Wall of China was pretty much abandoned. Yes, it is still the longest wall on Earth, and yes, it was first constructed to prevent the Mongolians from invading the country, and also to protect the Silk Road trade in the 700s. This doesn't seem completely fair, considering it was the Mongolians who started the Silk Road in the first place, but it is what it is. And in any case, the Great Wall really cemented the northernmost border of China. But the original structure is not actually what you see today. After all those years of building, the wall was pretty much abandoned. It was way too expensive to maintain and to guard, and so the dynasties that came after its construction either let it rot or actually ripped some sections of it apart to use for building supplies. In fact, the sections of the Great Wall that you see today were mostly constructed by the Ming Dynasty during the 1400s. This is because the Ming Dynasty construction workers used bricks and stone rather than just earth, and so their sections have survived much better. Most of the other sections decayed into nothingness after the abandonment or became completely unusable. In the Gobi Desert, miles and miles of the wall are completely buried in sand, and in other places, the wall is completely taken over by forest. Only some spots are open to visitors, with the most popular section being near the city of Beijing. The Most Haunted House in Italy Nothing is quite as strange as an abandoned haunted house, and there is no haunted house more haunted than the Villa de Vici, also referred to as the Red House, located near Lake Como in Italy. The house was originally constructed as a mansion in the 19th century, however the house has been abandoned for decades and falling into complete degradation. So far as the local legend goes, there are still ghosts living in the villa, and they play the piano on a nightly basis. The villa is completely surrounded by woods and totally isolated. It's not actually known when the manor was first abandoned, but many people believe it happened after the original owner of the house found his wife and daughter horribly murdered. The original owner of the house died soon after the event, which may or may not have happened, and then the house fell into disrepair. It remained abandoned until the 1920s when Aleister Crowley spent a few nights in the villa inspired by the supposed ghosts. It's been said that Mr. Crowley performed satanic rites and possibly even murdered someone within the Red House's walls. To this day, local Italians are nervous to go near the house, and to be quite frank, it's just a matter of time until someone comes along and demolishes the Villa de Vici and erases its dark past. The Magnetic Boy You may have heard of the Magnetic Boy before. He's a six-year-old kid from Croatia who attracted a lot of media attention a few years ago for apparently being a miniature magneto. Metal objects like forks and spoons stuck to his body. Ivan is his name and his family claim that he was magnetic. However, this story has kind of a hilarious twist. Ivan the Magnetic Boy never actually developed special abilities. It turned out in the end that Ivan was actually just sticky. According to a recent report from Live Science, some professionals got together and debunked the Magnetic Boy. They said that first of all, one of the photos shows Ivan with the plastic remote control stuck to his chest. Considering remote controls are plastic and not metal, that right there says a lot. The experts are saying that because young Ivan has smooth skin without any hair, he probably just has really sticky skin. And this is obviously not a superpower or a special ability, some people just have sticky skin. All people have a little bit of stickiness going on with their skin, but some people are extra sticky. At the end of the day, the magnetic boy isn't as special as everyone thought, he just has really slimy skin. The Man Who Ate an Airplane this next one is a little strange. Is it a superpower to eat an entire airplane? Some might say yes, some might say no. But a man named Michael Latito believed himself extraordinary for the simple triumph of eating an entire airplane, among other things. 
He didn't eat the aircraft all at once, of course, it took him two years to finish it, but he did eat an entire Cessna 150 airplane piece by piece. He also ate 18 bicycles, 7 TVs, 2 beds, 15 supermarket shopping carts, a computer, a coffin, 6 chandeliers, and even a pair of skis. So is he superhuman or just super insane? According to Ripley's Believe It or Not, it's all about the digestive system. Doctors determined long ago that Mr. Latito had an extremely resilient digestive system with an extra thick stomach lining and intestines. The result was that he was able to eat pretty much anything. While definitely not the most useful superpower, it is still pretty amazing. Unfortunately, the man who ate a plane passed away of natural causes back in 2007 at the ripe old age of 57. Sudden Artist to be quite honest, most spectacular abilities involve a malfunction with the brain and a sudden ability to create. Whether it be art or music, a stroke or a coma, 99% of the people on Earth who develop superpowers do so after a brain injury, and their superpower is usually something artistic. Take John Sarkin for example. He had been working as a chiropractor when he suffered a horrible stroke. This happened at only 35 years old, but after his stroke, John turned into a visual artist with an insatiable need to create. After his stroke, he couldn't stop making beautiful and incredible art. But how could a stroke turn John into an artist? Apparently, the left side of John's brain was extremely deprived of oxygen during his stroke. Because of this, John was forced to rely more on the other side of his brain. It meant that he had to interact with his world differently. Differently. Because he now saw the world in a different light and interpreted the people and things around him differently, he essentially turned into an artist, and that's really what's going on with these types of post-accident creatives. Electric Piano Can you imagine getting struck by lightning? Meet Tony Sasoria, who had been minding his own business at a phone booth back in 1994 when a lightning bolt came out of nowhere and struck him in the head. This is an incredibly rare thing to happen, and miraculously, he survived the incident without any more than a few burns on his face and foot. But what's really incredible is that ever since Tony was hit by the lightning, he's had melodies stuck in his head. He became obsessed with the desire to listen to piano music. The problem for Tony was that he couldn't play any instruments. Tony was a doctor at the time he was struck by lightning, specializing in orthopedic medicine. He was barely 42 years old and knew nothing about music, but that didn't stop Tony from chasing his new impulses. Within a few months of being struck by lightning, Tony was spending almost all of his time playing and composing music on the piano. Then in 2007, Tony debuted his first piano composition in Connecticut. That was 13 years after he was struck by lightning. The electricity from the sky literally turned Tony into a magic man on the piano. While it might not be as great a superpower as flying or teleporting, it's definitely pretty cool. You can even watch Tony playing his lightning sonata on the piano. It's the same melody he's heard in his head ever since the bolt of lightning crashed down on him. If you could have any superhuman ability, what would you wish for? Music? Superhearing? Telling the future? Anything? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Human Jukebox Let's keep it moving with another musical power. A man named Derek is known as the Human Jukebox. This is because unlike most pianists who need to read music to play it, Derek only needs to hear the song once to replay the entire thing perfectly. Derek is also known as a savant. This means that he's mentally impaired, and yet he is gifted with other special abilities that exceed the average person's talents. It's like if you could just pick up a guitar and play any song you heard on the radio just by hearing it once, but you'd have to sacrifice something else in order to do it. So where did Derek get this amazing power? Well, it all began 15 weeks before he was supposed to be born. He was very premature, and came out into the world blind and autistic. He couldn't read or communicate properly, but somehow he was able to use music as a form of communication. He actually actually started playing the piano at only two years old on a toy organ. By the age of four, he was playing the piano on his elbows and on the backs of his hands, and he was playing some pretty complex pieces. When he got older, Derek attended the Linden Lodge School of the Blind in London. Now he spends most of his time playing the piano, composing and improvising music, and hanging out with family and friends. And no, scientists have no idea how he's able to memorize and then mimic any piece of piano music. Most professionals believe that since Derek is a savant, his brain became hypersensitive to compensate for the damaged parts, and this heightened his auditory abilities. The First Cyborg a man named Neil Harbison is the world's first legal cyborg. That's right, this guy is literally part human and part robot. He has an antenna implanted in his skull that gives him a very special ability. Maybe not special to you or I, but special to him. You see, Neil was diagnosed as being completely colorblind. 
The antenna installed inside of his brain gives him the ability to see color, and the most amazing part about it is that Neil developed this technology himself. Neil worked with another computer scientist to develop something that they called the iBorg. It's an antenna attached to a very small computer and a pair of headphones. Then at the end of the antenna is a webcam that translates color into 360 different waves of sound that Neil listens to through his headphones, allowing him to understand which colors he's looking at. Although this might sound like something from a weird science fiction movie in the future, it's happening right now. Neil literally has an extra sense that nobody else has. According to a report from CNN, it took Neil a full five weeks to get over the headaches that he was getting from listening to so many new colors. It then took him another five months to be able to decipher which frequencies belong to which colors. It's a pretty impressive technology, and it apparently turned going to a supermarket into visiting a nightclub because of all the sound frequencies being transmitted into his brain. What's really interesting is that after installing the cyborg apparatus into his brain, Neil said that his concept of race changed. According to the sounds that he hears, black people aren't actually black, but they appear as very dark orange to him, and people who are white appear as extremely light orange. It's totally Totally bizarre and absolutely fascinating. The Deaf Composer Almost everybody knows who Beethoven is, but what a lot of people don't know is that Ludwig van Beethoven, the legendary composer that created some of the most beautiful music in the universe, was deaf. Not only that, but he went deaf halfway through his career. While some people see Beethoven's triumph over his lack of hearing as an example of determination, others say that going deaf actually heightened his ability to compose music. Of course, Beethoven didn't go deaf overnight. It was a gradual process that went on and on throughout his career, but as he grew older, his music began to sound a little different. That's because he could not rely on his ears anymore. Beethoven actually composed much of his music later in life solely on vibration, and this enabled him to create a completely unique sound that has yet to be replicated. It just goes to show that our senses are more powerful than most of us give them credit for. Indestructible Bones there is a family out there with bones so strong they simply won't break. The DNA of an extended family in Connecticut has been sampled and analyzed by genetic specialists from the Yale Bone Center in an attempt to understand how genetic mutation can cause high bone density. This is something of an anomaly in human genetics. Members of this single family have bones so strong that they have been compared to the hero played by Bruce Willis in the movie Unbreakable. They have extraordinarily dense bones, making them the most indestructible people on the planet. Unfortunately, we don't know much about these people. 20 members of the family gave blood samples to be DNA tested, and all of them had their bone density measured. Nine members of the family had normal bone density, but the other 11 were superhuman. What makes this really incredible is obviously if scientists can figure out how to locate and isolate the gene mutation, we could be looking at people in the future with unbreakable bones. And if you ask me, that is a legit superpower. Nobody would need to be scared of skateboards or rollerblades anymore. Of course, it's unlikely that the family members developed their strong bones somewhere in life. It's more likely that one of their ancestors was born with a genetic mutation hundreds or even thousands of years ago, and it's slowly been carried forward through descendants. Super Memory how would you like to be one of only 80 people to remember every detail of every second of your life? It might be more trouble than it's worth. A woman named Rebecca has been diagnosed with something known as highly superior autobiographical memory, and it is a very real superpower. This condition prevents people from being able to forget, and like I already said, less than 100 people in the world have it. This power doesn't relate only to events either. Rebecca can remember dreams she had when she was only 18 months old, and she can even remember being photographed only only 12 days after her birth. Even more bizarre, Rebecca can recite the entire collection of Harry Potter books. Scientists are unsure what causes this incredibly rare condition. However, some professionals do believe that human beings never truly forget anything, we just have trouble bringing it to the surface. But that does not explain why Rebecca and the others like her are able to develop such unbelievable memories. We may never unlock the secret to this power. The Iceman Wim Hof, also known as the Iceman, is the closest thing on Earth to a person with superhuman abilities, and no, he was not born special. He gained his powers through raw determination. That's right, Wim Hof conquered the world using nothing but his own commitment and a special breathing practice. It's no joke either, he has set some serious world records. According to Guinness World Records, Hof has swum the furthest under ice, going a full 188.6 feet, but that's nothing. He has a world record for the fastest half marathon ran barefoot on ice and snow. He has the longest record for being in full contact with ice, over 1 hour and 42 minutes. 
He also climbed to 23,600 feet on Mount Everest wearing nothing but shorts and shoes. That really puts the hardcore climbers and all their fancy gear to shame. So what allows this guy to run up the side of Mount Everest in shorts and sneakers while other people are wrapped up like Eskimos? Was he born with some kind of special skin that nobody else has? No. He's just a normal guy who has gained the ability to focus his mind and his breathing to essentially make him impervious to fatigue or cold. And what makes Wim Hof's story extra special is that anyone can become super enough to climb a mountain in their shorts if they just put their mind to it. Focus, determination, and patience are the key to becoming superhuman. Which of these superpowers would you prefer to have? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching. Stop by again for another great video and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Seahawk Fighter Jet Back in 1964, a Seahawk fighter jet crashed into the ocean. The aircraft had apparently been hijacked by a young maintenance worker who wished to be a pilot but had been rejected by the Air Force. So he became an ordnance mechanic instead. Then one Sunday morning, he climbed into the cockpit of a Seahawk, started the engine, took her up into the air, then crashed it into the Bay of Bengal. Luckily, the pilot was rescued by a local fisherman. However, the aircraft was never recovered. It sat at the bottom of the bay for around 40 years. Even though all the locals knew where it was, nobody had any interest in retrieving the aircraft from the muck. It was not until 2010 that divers went down to see the vehicle for the very first time. And yes, it was sitting spookily at the bottom of the bay, surrounded by fish and mud. The Seahawk was never pulled out of the water, but divers did find its remains, which is good enough for some people. As for the ordnance mechanic who allegedly stole and crashed the plane in the first place, he was sentenced to two years imprisonment and later fled India for Canada. The Yonaguni Pyramid off the coast of Japan, there's a giant rock formation and nobody knows what it is. The Yonaguni Pyramid is undoubtedly the most mysterious object ever found underwater. It was first spotted by divers in 1987 and you can very clearly see from any angle that the Yonaguni Pyramid must have been made by human hands. It clearly has levels, steps, and smooth sides that could only have been done by a being with technology. And despite its discovery in the 80s, the government of Japan continues to deny that this underwater oddity has anything to do with history or archaeology. Theology. Basically, nobody in any official capacity wants to talk about the pyramid, suggesting that there could be something spooky going on. Even though most researchers believe the ruins date back to at least 5,000 years ago and were at least manipulated somewhat by human hands, officials continue to ignore it but it's getting harder to ignore. There is ample evidence that the Yonaguni Pyramid was crafted by humans. For example, there was a triangular depression found in the monument that had two holes beside it, which led researchers to believe that there was an attempt to separate the rock by using wedges. So somebody obviously had a hand in crafting this bizarre underwater spectacle. And despite everything, the Japanese Agency for Cultural Affairs and the government of the Okinawa Prefecture have denied the pyramid as an important historical artifact. What are they trying to hide? New Blob Species Let's move from stone to life. In 2020, scientists from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration formally identified a new species of creature for the very first time based only on video footage taken from the bottom of the ocean. And what a creature it is. It's a strange gelatinous blob known as Duobrachium sparksae, and it looks like something that should be floating around in outer space. This blob is a species of tinafore, and it was captured on video by a remotely operated vehicle near the coast of Puerto Rico. The strange blob was found about two and a half miles beneath the surface, and while claiming a new species based on nothing but video evidence is preposterous and unheard of, they actually managed to get away with it this time because the creature was so uniquely strange. No other living thing on Earth has two long tentacles and a body that's basically just a transparent balloon. According to one of the oceanographers who worked on the project, the organism is beautiful and unique. It moves like a hot air balloon slowly over the sea floor, using its two tentacles like anchors. It maintains a very specific altitude altitude while floating. However, researchers are not sure if it's actually anchored to the seabed, and even though the blob looks like a jellyfish, it's actually a completely different organism. Apollo Rocket Engines 
Imagine coming across a space rocket stuck in the sand at the bottom of the ocean. You would immediately think extraterrestrial spaceship. But of course, this story is about the Apollo moon rocket engines that were raised from the bottom of the sea by the ridiculously rich CEO of Amazon, Jeff Bezos. What's really interesting about the Apollo rocket engines is that everyone had thought they were lost forever. They were the huge engines that launched the astronauts to the moon around 50 years ago, but it took a private expedition led by the founder of an internet company to find them. So good job to the government on this one. These rockets were originally used in the 60s and 70s to send missions from Earth into orbit and to the moon. The mighty Saturn V rockets gave the space vessels a boost out of the atmosphere before plummeting down into the seafloor. According to Bezos himself, the Apollo rockets will be restored and then likely donated to the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum in Washington. It's a bit awkward because Bezos paid the money to find the rockets, bring them out of the ocean and restore them, and yet NASA owns them. They kind of have to go with whatever the rich guy says in this case. Mysterious Purple Orb Believe it or not, a mysterious purple disco ball has been discovered deep within the ocean. This is one of the most bizarre and mysterious discoveries of the last few years when it comes to blobs. This thing looked like a glowing blip on the screen. The small purple orb was originally found during an exploration of the Arguello Canyon deep inside the ocean. The orb was actually collected using a suction tool on the remotely operated vehicle Hercules as none of the scientists could properly identify the orb. After all, it was sitting tucked under a rock shelf about 5,000 feet below the surface. At first glance, it almost appeared to be an alien homing beacon. But of course, it's probably a life form. Researchers first thought that it could be an unknown species of gastropod. However, once the scientists got the purple orb back on board their vessel, they could see that it was clearly not a gastropod. The orb unfolded into something that almost looked like a pair of lungs. According to the report from Live Science, researchers suspected that it was a pleurobranch or a type of mollusk. Whatever it was, this species was definitely unknown. In fact, the scientists were stumped over the identity of the purple blob. Nobody knew why it was glowing, why there was only one of them discovered in such a huge area, or if they would even find another one again. Alien Squid Blobs are interesting enough in their own way, but a recent image out of the Gulf of Mexico is so horrifying that it will literally scare the pants right off your legs. Lurking in the deep and gloomy depths is a species of something that looks like it's straight out of Stephen King's The Mist. This creature doesn't even look like it should be real. The footage of it was captured by a remotely operated vehicle being used by Shell Oil to study the water around its oil rigs. And that's exactly where this monstrous thing was found. It was filmed in the Perdido area of the Alaminos Canyon where Shell Oil has a pretty heavy industrial influence. But what is this terrifying monster? And to answer what everyone's thinking, yes, it is real. It's actually known as a magna pinna squid, sometimes referred to as the long-armed squid. This is because it's roughly 26 feet in length and has extremely thin tentacles that are almost elastic, being roughly 20 times larger than the squid's actual body. These squids are so rare and so mystifying that not a single one has ever been physically captured or sampled. It actually took the video footage from Shell Oil to reveal the mystery of how this thing even moves. The rare sighting was at a depth of over 7,800 feet. That is pretty much at the bottom of the ocean. It goes to show that way down near the bottom of the sea are all kinds of horrifying monsters that we still probably have not identified. The long-armed squid was only first discovered in 1907, then documented on video for the first time in 1988. Mysterious Underwater Mine Let's stop talking about horrifying sea monsters for a minute. Instead, let's find out what's going on with the strange and mysterious underwater mine recently located in the sprawling labyrinth of underwater caves along the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. It's true that these caves hold some of the most impressive archaeological relics anywhere on the planet. At least the artifacts that divers have uncovered from these underground tunnels have definitely been unique compared to anything else on Earth. But this newest discovery goes way back in time to the earliest prehistoric trace of humankind on the continent. A new study has unearthed the oldest known mine in the Americas. According to Science Alert, a subterranean ochre mine has been found that dates back to 12,000 years ago. An expert diver and micropaleontologist from McMaster University in Canada claims that the underwater caves are like a time capsule with clear evidence of ochre mining thousands of years ago. So what does that mean? And how does it fit in with the heaps of skeletal remains that have been found in nearby caverns that date back only a few thousand years? Well, scientists just don't know the answers yet. 
evidence suggests that the submerged cave systems were only operational for about 2,000 years, so between 12,000 years ago and 10,000 years ago, ancient people would have extracted the ochre then just kind of gave up the cave and left. But scientists can't really say why. It could be that they moved on to other deposits, considering there are still hundreds and hundreds of miles of unexplored caves in the area. Or something else could have happened. Scientists just can't be sure. All they know is that the ochre pigment must have been incredibly important for ancient people to go through so much trouble of mining it. The Longest Animal Ever I know that I said enough of the sea monsters, but let's take a look at another sea monster. And believe me, this one is going to blow your mind. The world's longest animal has recently been discovered in the waters of Australia. That's right, it's the longest animal ever documented, and it's weirdly spooky. At first, it almost looks like some kind of alien string or something that fell off their spaceship. But according to scientists, it's actually a siphonophore, which is a deep sea predator made up of multiple clones all acting together as one organism. This particular siphonophore measured an estimated 150 feet. That makes it the longest animal ever. It's about twice as long as any blue whale and at least three times longer than any humpback whale. It's also incredible and acts like a jellyfish in that it feeds by dangling thin tentacles into the water that can sting fish and crustaceans unlucky enough to swim beneath its curtain of stingers. This is not the kind of creature you want to be caught in the middle of. Imagine trying to swim through all those poisonous rings. The USS Oriskany in the Pensacola Pass, deep in the spooky waters of the Gulf of Mexico is the USS Oriskany. It's definitely one of the spookiest ghost ships beneath the water. It's also the world's largest artificial reef. It was once an aircraft carrier, but now sits 22 miles southeast of the Pensacola Pass, 212 feet beneath the ocean. The ship was commissioned near the end of World War II, but it never saw any action until Korea. Then, in 1963, JFK boarded the vessel to witness military operations, but alas, the ship did not prove very useful and it was eventually decommissioned in 1976. Then in 2006, they sunk the boat to make an artificial reef. Now it's one of the spookier places you can go diving off the coast of Florida. It's full of fish, it's full of history, and in the murky waters, it'll feel like you're exploring a sunken vessel from a bygone age. The Bloop not all the mysterious things found underwater are visible. For example, there is the mysterious bloop. It was a sound heard on hydrophones in 1997. To this day, nobody is sure what made this strange noise. It was extremely loud, delivered at an ultra-low frequency, and was heard at different listening stations underwater thousands of miles apart. It's one of the only truly baffling noises ever picked up by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Many scientists put forth their own theories in the years following 1997, saying the bloop could have been an unknown animal, but the truth is that nobody has ever solved this mystery. Also, the NOAA is fairly sure the sound was not made by a creature. Some think that it could have been the cracking of an ice shelf breaking off from Antarctica. In fact, a seismologist from the Oregon State University claims the bloop was indeed the sound of an ice quake. This guy also says that the idea of a giant animal being able to make a noise heard all across the Pacific Ocean was always more of a fantasy than a science. But just what does this guy think he knows? The sound could very well have been the yawn of Cthulhu or even the rousing of the old ones from deep beneath the earth. Which of these underwater discoveries was the most fascinating? Valle de Mulini. If you've ever wondered what the world would look like without people, take a glance at the Valley of the Mills in Sorrento, Italy. This place is an oddly peaceful look into a humanless future. The valley began life 35,000 years ago after a large volcanic eruption created a deep crevice in the earth. Then in the 13th century, flour mills were built inside the crack. They took advantage of the constant stream at the floor of the valley. The mill was quite successful and so other industrial outfits sprung up in the area to take advantage of the same water system, including a sawmill and a wash house. However, most of the mills and their industries became obsolete in the early 1900s and closed. Since at least the 1940s, the valley of the mills has been completely abandoned. Over 80 years later and the brick buildings are nearly gone, overgrown with beautiful greenery. This is truly a breathtaking place and a fantastic reminder that if you humans were to just stop existing, Mother Nature would very quickly erase any trace that we had ever been here. Fairy Tale House Near the abandoned village of Ostashevo, deep in the rural wilderness of Russia, there is an abandoned house that, depending on your perception, is either a nightmare or a beautifully tranquil property. 
The wooden structure is definitely not livable and would require a significant number of renovations just to make it habitable. Nonetheless, it kind of looks like something out of an old Russian fairy tale. The house was likely built by a wealthy industrialist sometime near the end of the 19th century. However, it's not been confirmed who built the house or why they abandoned it. At first glance, the house doesn't appear to have been lived in for very long. Much of the floor is missing, there are no windows, and it's very susceptible to Russian bear attacks. But here is where the story gets amazing. Someone actually purchased this decrepit and abandoned piece of property and completely restored it, turning it into a fairy tale Russian castle. Then in 2016, this magical forest property opened as a hotel museum where you can learn about the local history while staying in one of the most unique places ever. Have you ever encountered an abandoned place? Maybe a gas station down some rural road or a farmhouse that still has equipment from 50 years ago? Or somewhere even more surprising and unique? Tell me about your experiences finding somewhere totally abandoned in the comments below. Then be sure to subscribe to Taltanic for more awesome videos just like this one. Columbia's Beautifully Haunted Hotel Just because a place is haunted does not mean it's not beautiful. The Hotel Del Salto in Colombia is one of the most breathtaking structures in the world. It's also abandoned and full of ghosts. It's located just outside of Bogota and was built in 1923 as a residential manor. The building was constructed using striking French architecture with high windows and the pure elegance of the 1920s. According to a report from the Vintage News, the house was opened as a hotel in 1928 for wealthy travelers and then operated for 60 years before being abandoned. Tourists lost interest in the area and the hotel was forced to close in the 1990s, but since then, it has become a popular tourist attraction for its desolate beauty. The hotel sits on the edge of a cliff overlooking a waterfall and the jungle. It's one of the most picturesque places near Bogota. As for the hauntings, there are some local legends that claim many indigenous people died at the site of the hotel while trying to escape Spanish conquerors, and their spirits still haunt the area today. Hearthstone Castle Deep in the woods of Connecticut is Hearthstone Castle, a beautiful pile of crumbling stone completely abandoned. It was built between 1896 and 1899 as a summer retreat for a New York photographer. You really have to wonder how much money photographers were making in the 1800s to be able to afford a literal castle. This place had 16 rooms, 9 of which were bedrooms, plus a library and even a billiard room. The exterior was crafted from stone and the wood was imported from Italy. What's really crazy is that the photographer and his family only lived in this place for five years before selling it to a gentleman in 1902, who then sold it to another gentleman in 1918. Seventy years later, the castle was abandoned before eventually being purchased by the city of Danbury. Since then, it has been vandalized, riddled with graffiti, and left to rot. Technically, the castle is in a park which makes it public property. It's a must-see on your next trip to Connecticut. The Initiation Well There is a place known as the Initiation Well in Portugal near the small town of Sintra. The well is 88 feet, but was never actually used as a water resource. The creepily beautiful place was actually constructed for secret ceremonies. The well is part of Quinta de Regalera, which was commissioned by a well-known Portuguese Freemason who constructed the property with the help of a skilled Italian architect. The property consists of several spooky buildings, mysterious parks, and even underground tunnels. Almost all of the structures are linked to one secret order or another, including the Masons, the Knights Templar, and even Tarot mysticism. The original palace was constructed in 1904, complete with a gothic facade, carved gargoyles, and five floors. The history of this place literally goes on and on. It transferred owners throughout the years, more confusing structures were built onto it, and then there's the Initiation Well. The Initiation Well is also an entrance to an underground labyrinth. It has a spiral staircase, nine landings, and is likely linked to mysterious mysterious tarot mysticisms and Masonic principles. The nine landings are even thought to represent the nine circles of hell, the nine sections of purgatory, and the nine skies of paradise. This is one of the spookiest and yet captivating properties in the world. In fact, this is inarguably the most amazing abandoned place ever. It's unclear what rituals exactly went on at the bottom of this well or inside the depths of the palace, but it's now abandoned and silent. Confronc Station Confronc Station in Spain is purely gorgeous. It's undoubtedly one of the most beautiful train stations in the world, nestled on all sides by mountains and sparse forests. The station originally opened in 1928 as one of Europe's largest rail hubs. The inauguration ceremony was even attended by the King of Spain and the President of the French Republic. But then in World War II, the train station was the site of all kinds of horrible acts. Espionage, the trafficking of gold, and many arrests occurred there. By 1970, this station closed its doors and went abandoned. It has sat completely unused ever since then, with the interior rusting away and the old trains turning into relics of the past. There's little evidence now of the tragedy 
activities that went on during the 1940s. The station is quiet and serene. However, Spanish authorities are hoping to revitalize the station for tourism purposes. In the next few years, Confranc station may once again be open for business, but until then, it remains an empty husk of a simpler and yet in some ways far more complicated time. The Hachijo Royal Hotel the Hachijo Royal Hotel is one of the most impressive abandoned buildings ever. The hotel is located on a volcanic island about 178 miles south of Tokyo, dubbed the Hawaii of Japan. It was an extremely popular destination for Japanese tourists in the 1960s as it was almost impossible for Japanese citizens to travel outside of the country. But then in 1964, the government made it easier for the Japanese to travel and tourism boomed. Still, not everyone wanted to leave the country and so the Hachijo Royal Hotel became wild wildly popular as a gorgeous seaside resort that did not involve traveling to nearby Thailand or Hawaii. It opened in 1963 and was one of the largest hotels in all of Japan. However, by 2000, things were falling apart. Japanese were traveling abroad in record numbers and nobody cared about going to the Hawaii of Japan anymore. Finally, the hotel was forced to close in 2006 because of non-existent tourists. Since then, the hotel has sat abandoned, it's been overgrown, the pools are empty, the rooms are a tattered and decaying mess, and the sea continues to riot against the shore just a few feet from the hotel doors. Italy's Abandoned Ghost Town Leave it to Italy to have an entire abandoned ghost town from medieval times sitting on the edge of a small mountain. The town's name is Krakow, and for 50 years it has sat abandoned. The houses are still there, the streets are still in relatively good condition, but there are no humans around. The dark windows look across the land like vacant eye sockets, while the rock facades slowly crumble into dust. So what happened to this once magnificent town? Well, in the year 1561, there were about 2,500 people in the town. Back then, that was a pretty good number. There was a permanent monastic order, an agricultural community, and they were making headways in science and religion. But then in 1656, a plague struck the city and killed most of the population. Then near the end of the 19th century, a famine caused a mass migration. Almost everyone moved from Krakow to North America between 1892 and 1922. Then in 1933, there was a huge landslide that caused even more people to move. And finally, between the 1950s and the 1970s, a series of landslides prompted the last dozen or so remaining residents to flee. All that's left now is a beautiful landscape from a medieval world we can only dream about. Herda Island Ghost Town the Herta Island ghost town is located in one of the most vacant and beautiful places on Earth, the Outer Hebrids in Scotland. Nobody has lived on this remote island since 1930, and yes, it is truly beautiful in the most isolated sense of the word. It's the remotest island in the United Kingdom and had previously been occupied for 2,000 years. But all that changed in 1930 when the island was evacuated following the death of a young woman who perished of pneumonia, which would not have been fatal if she had been living on the mainland. Another issue is that the people in the town had lived off of things like weaving, fishing, and farming, and it simply was not going to cut it anymore. This truly was one of the last ancient places on Earth where the people lived the traditional way of life. Nonetheless, the island was abandoned in the face of the modern world. A ship took the remaining few villagers to mainland Scotland, they left behind an open Bible in each cottage before getting on the ship, and interestingly enough, the very last resident of this ghost town who was evacuated at 8 years old died in April of 2016. The island today is a UNESCO World Heritage Site with a small population of sheep and a whole lot of puffins. Dundas Castle Let's examine yet another castle, both abandoned and impressively aesthetic. The Dundas Castle in New York is not quite as impressive as Hearthstone Castle in Connecticut, but it is still a beautiful location nonetheless. It's surrounded by the deep forests of the Catskill Mountains and looks like it was designed based on a young child's vision of medieval Europe. In fact, the Dundas Castle in New York was heavily modeled after the original Dundas Castle in Scotland. It's basically a luxurious medieval mansion, but it did not start out like that. It was constructed as a small summer house for an architect in the 1880s, but when he passed away in 1911, the land and house went up for sale, the ownership traded hands several times, more additions were built, and the castle was eventually abandoned sometime around the 1950s after never having been lived in by any of its owners. Dundas Castle is now beautiful in a spooky kind of way. It's been pretty badly vandalized throughout the years, but it still remains in surprisingly good condition. A local legend even says that three of the heart-shaped ponds on the grounds fill up with blood during the full moon. It's also said that the castle is cursed since none of the people who ever owned it managed to actually live in it. Which of these beautiful abandoned places would you just love to visit to spend one night at? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and come back soon for another awesome video.